Okay, so I want to welcome everyone to week 10 of X Essentials. Tonight's uh, exciting topic, and hopefully we can learn a lot to save on our displays. Angelo, you've got the floor. All right. Hello, everyone. Is everybody see my screen? Yep. Right, I'm seeing all the sharing and stuff at the top of the screen, and hopefully people don't see that. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Close that one out. All right. Well, welcome to Penny Pinching Pixels. Ed had asked me to do an X Essentials and didn't ask me if I wanted to pick a topic. He said, hey, you want to do something on being a cheapskate? You know, trying to, uh, he knows how much I look for deals out there. And I'm always talking about where I find this and how much I got that for. So I said, sure. And then came up with the title, Penny Pinching Pixels. So I do a show, Lights on Thunder Road. 2019 was my first year. I am a proud participant of the X Lights around the world. 2019, thought I'd showcase that for once. Um, my background: I have been in computers for 37 years. Been doing a lot of desktop and server network support. So back in my teen years, I used to decorate my house with my father, uh, or decorate his house. Uh, it got me into the lights. Got me decorating. I don't have any pictures of that. I'm sure I have it somewhere, but I think it's at my mom's house. I couldn't get any pictures of that. Uh, got out of it for a few years while I was in the military. Ended up in California, got married. Uh, so back in 96, when I got my house, I started decorating my own house. There's an old picture of it. Old digital cameras used to blur everything. Could never get it clear. So, and then, um, so I did that until 07. Uh, economy went tanked and ended up coming back to Florida and with my work and everything I now settled again I got a house three years ago and I was ready to start decorating so when I started looking into it I figured hey I remember that pixel stuff or, or light rama and I really was about to get into that when everything tanked and I kind of lost everything so I started looking back into it and found uh Cam Spader Christmas Channel, and everybody knows him. Jeff is just uh, a great presenter, talker. He's very funny, and his YouTube videos are wonderful on teaching. So I learned a lot from him, uh, all his videos, and decided to really get into this. So November 2018, I was ready to put up my light show. I had some I, I was just going to do straight incandescent lights, well, LED lights. I got I had a whole, bought a whole bunch of them, like four or 5,000 lights on clearance the year before from Walmart, buck a box, and ready to put them up. And then I saw uh, Jeff's YouTube videos and said, screw it, I'm going to learn how to do this. Forget this year, I'll, I'll get it next year. So in February 2019, I had bought a few lights and got them up around the trim. I uh, put them up with J channel so they're up permanently. They look really good. Most people don't, can't even tell they're there unless I say, hey, look, I got the lights up there. They're just little white dots that you can see here and there, but mostly it matches the brown. It's a chocolate uh, aluminum J channel. And then I had my first show in November and it went really well. I ended up with 18 songs in the show. You can see the picture down here. I ended up with 10,000 lights. Quite a few things that I didn't put out. I have a two by six P5 matrix, and that never made it to the show. Uh, I've got a bunch of props, never made it on the house. I just kind of ran out of time. And that's the whole thing with this. As everybody knows, it takes a lot of time. This presentation is going under the assumptions that you know, you kind of know the general cost of this hobby. Uh, most everybody has looked at pricing on pixels and controllers and uh, all the aspects of basically doing this Christmas decorating. And it can be expensive. So any way we can save even a few dollars here and there, it does add up. You know, small things on the front end will add up on big thing, big savings on the back end. Uh, you gotta be handy and creative and or creative. Uh, you, some of this stuff is do it yourself. Uh, instead of purchasing things pre-made and the cookie cutter thing, take some time and make something yourself and you probably save some money. Uh, assumption that you want to save some money. You wouldn't be here if you 
uh, did want to save some money, maybe learn something tonight on how to buy something less expensive or figure out how to uh, do something on the cheap, but still make it look good. Uh, you look at everything with the decorator's eye. I know I walk through Walmart and every store that I go into now, and I just see some odds and ends, knickknacks or things that are out, whether it doesn't matter what the season is. Like, how can I make that something into a prop, decorate it with lights and put it out on the show? So I know everybody's kind of done that here. If you haven't, you will. Uh, so it's tempting to buy things and try and integrate it with your show or try and make it work. But unless you're sure you can, don't waste the money. If you need it later, it more than likely will be there unless it's some clearance item. But if it's something that's in the stores, like I've seen some uh, plant stands in gardening out in the landscape area and in Walmart. If you flip it upside down and actually push the three prongs together, it makes a nice mini tree. You can zip tie it at the top, put some pixels on it, and it would basically make a really nice mini tree. And it's like seven bucks or something like that. And, you know, cost savings as far as really buying a Boscoyo Dalek tree, one of the mini trees would be the shipping is where you'd save on that. But just looking at it and, and maybe being a, a little different size. So it would be kind of more unique than everybody with the same, <clears throat> however tall those mini Dalek trees are. Uh, 18 inches, 24 inches, and having 50 of them in the art. Uh, you won't get insulted with my opinions here, or I hope you won't get insulted with my opinions. I don't, I'm very straightforward. I tell it like it is. Um, I have my opinions on certain things. It's not that I don't dislike anything in the community. I love everybody in the community. Everybody's wonderful, helpful. Uh, I, I just see things sometimes in different light and don't always think buying everything uh, pre-made and ready to go for your show is always the best way to do it. So I'll have some of my opinions in this and take it for what it's worth. Um, and, you know, if you're cheapskate, thrifty, stingy, meager, pennywise, tightwad, cheap ass, frugal shopper like me, then you'll kind of enjoy some of the stuff I have in here. So the topics, some of the topics tonight is uh, time versus convenience versus cost. How much do things cost versus uh, making it versus buying it? Um, and what's the convenience of actually making something versus buying, buying something pre-made, say from one of the core vendors? Um, your wants versus your needs in this uh, hobby. We want everything. We want the biggest, best, brightest show out there, but do we really need it? Sometimes less is more. Um, do you shop online? Do you shop local? Where Where's the best place to find some of the stuff that you need? Obviously, we're kind of stuck on a lot of things for, for our hobby being online because there's no local store that has pixels or has the Coro props. But you can go to Home Depot and buy Coro sheets. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, you can go to Home Depot and buy all your hardware and uh, things that you you will need to put all this stuff together, mount it to the to the roof or to the house. So there's, where do you want to go on some of these items online or local? Uh, it's software and hardware. The software, of course, being X lights or whatever software you're using and the hardware being controllers and uh, other equipment that we need for this. Props, where do you get your props? Where do you buy your props? Uh, how do you make your props? Uh, deals, just other ways to find different deals out there. And then uh, I've got a little thing for building a show for under a thousand dollars is kind of what it, it for a lot of this is for the new people that this might be their first year. They don't really realize what some of the stuff costs, but you can do this on a budget and hopefully everybody's doing it on a budget and not charging up the cards and putting themselves in debt to put on a show for people that come in ooh and ah and say, ooh, that's really cool, and then go away. So it's, I know a lot of us enjoy putting the show on as much as the people that come by and watch the show. So the time versus convenience versus the cost. What is your time worth? Do you have more time than money? Uh, I, that's my case. I'm My job doesn't pay a lot and I've got good benefits, but I really don't make a lot. So I don't have a lot of money I can throw at this hobby. So with my time, I try to find ways to save that dollar, save that $20 and make something myself 
uh, be it uh, extension cables. I have wire, free wire that I've got coming out the yin yang. I can, uh, I can make several thousand feet of extension cables. Uh, you know, as long as I have the pigtails put on them, I can sit there and take the time and make those big, make those extension cables. But I've found out that really that on something like that, and I'll, you know, at the bottom there, my time, cost, frustrations, and what I learned, one of the things I did learn is that those extension cables, if you're not soldering right, or those butt connectors or the solderless seals are not uh, uh, soldering correct, correctly, you're going to have problems. So if you can find a deal on the extension cables, instead of making your own, I found a really good deal with, uh, with Ray, uh, with his ends on them, and I've started really buying them from him now instead of making my own. I still have all this other cable I have stuff to do with, but I'll eventually find something uh, to do with it at some point. Um, the local uh, and local vendors, and I know not everybody's in the States. I always have the notion that everybody's in the States, but I know we have a lot of Australians and other countries in here. So the your local vendors are usually the most convenient, uh, but sometimes they cost more. Uh, not necessarily shipping wise. I know the UK people are saying it uh, costs a fortune to ship out from the US or from China or from wherever they're getting their stuff from. But like for the States, if we buy from uh, uh, Wired Watts, um, I, when I use site names and people's names and, and company names that is, are in the community, uh, there's no bashing here. They're just uh, using it as an example because it's the first thing I can think of off the top of my head. So buying from Wired Watts, now, their pixels are marked up a bit from, let's say, what you'd buy from Ray. Uh, so if you, you're buying them from them, from, from Wired Watts, and then you pay the shipping from wherever the Wired Watts is that they ship it to you, you're probably paying more than if you bought them from Ray or from uh, uh, Paul or one of the other uh, Chinese vendors. But uh, everybody seems to support their pixels pretty well. So if you have problems with them, whether you buy it from Ray, Paul, or Wired Watts or somebody else in, in the local U.S. community, they'll, they'll pretty much back their stuff as long as they can, you know, you can really show that you got, got it from them. But there's, there's a cost difference on when you look at one next to another. And if you're about that bottom dollar, this is very good to compare all, all your costs, just ask for quotes. Go out and look at prices. Most of the prices are set on online, but Ray fluctuates based on the season or based on uh, that time frame or whatever batch of pixels he has. Uh, same thing with Paul. I know Paul had a wonderful deal that yeah, was, I was ready to buy, I wanna say it was 5,000 5, pixels for a thousand bucks. So it was like 200 bucks for a thousand, uh, uh, 12 volt pixels, which normally range between 230 and 250. Sometimes they can even go a little higher from certain vendors. But uh, it, I ended up missing the deal by a day because I had bought them the day before and I bought 4,000 for like 860, 880. So it was still a good deal. But the next day he posted on Facebook, hey, I've got this deal, you know, 5,000 pixels for a for thousand bucks. I'm like, well, can you match it there? And he's like, no, because I bought it from AliExpress. Uh, and he can't match the prices from there where this was a Facebook deal on direct PayPal. So it was kind of a, well, I lost out on, on that one by a day. And sometimes you do, uh, can't kick yourself in the butt. You just move on. Hey, we'll, we'll get a better deal next time. Um, but uh, you know, the local vendors, if you want something quick, you'll get it a lot quicker than say from Ray or, or Paul from ordering from China. Uh, they have been fairly quick though. For, mo for the most part, we've, I've got my pixels within two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks from, from China, unless it's on a group buy where there are custom orders. I think our group buy last year, the first year that I was part of it in 2019, it took like two and a half, three months. There's so many custom orders in it and then trying to get it here in time. Uh, we were trying to get it for the Florida Mini to have it passed out, but we never did. So there's the time factor there as well. How quickly do you need it? How soon do you want to get all your props made? Uh, are you doing other holidays? Uh, I only do Christmas. I don't do Halloween, uh, but I, I'm planning on putting my tree back up and a few things for 4th of July this year or Veterans Day. I think it's really cool. 
uh, the, the the sequences that people have made for those. So I want to try and be a part of that as well this year. But I don't. I'm not big on Halloween, so I'm not really looking forward to decorating for Halloween. So again, my time, my costs, my frustrations. There's there are frustrations every day with this. You think you got something working, and then you put it on the wall, hook it up, and it doesn't work. And you got to try to figure out what the heck happened or where the where the break is. Is the, the cable too too long, too far? Is the connection right? It'll work today, but tomorrow it glitches or it flickers or it doesn't come on at all. So a lot of frustrations, but in the end, most of the time, everybody gets the, their, their shows up and running, whether it be 90%, 100%. You're going to be the only one that sees the glitches, the defects, the, the, the pixels that are out. I think some of the pixels I bought had had blue channels. The blue, There were six pixels on 3,200 pixels on my tree that had a blue channel that was that was not working. This was f from from Ray. I bought these pixels. I'm the only one that really noticed it. And I could point them out to everybody that I would talk to because I'd be out there every night with people chatting it up and they're they're telling me, you know, I you know, everything's great. I can't believe this. You're I'm not looking for the praise. I'm looking to make sure that people enjoy it. But I'm out there nitpicking everything because we're our own worst, worst critics. So you got to watch that. Um, want versus need. What do you want? Well, we want as many pixels as we can get, one inch spacing. So everything looks looks detailed and bright. That 50 foot mega tree, thousands of watts of power, you know, all these controller boxes. So we have everything running on less than 100 pixels per channel. Uh, you know, that 10 by 10 P5 display to, to put up all these wonderful pictures and display, just whatever you can show, movies, and lots of blinky flashy. But you know, we all know that's you know, a lot of this isn't possible unless you really have a good job and you have a lot of, uh, you know, extra money to throw out this hobby. So what you really need to start, and you don't even have to buy anything to start. You can start with X lights create your design, not spend a dime, figure out exactly, not even exactly, just a general feel of what you want, how you want to lay it out in the house, and then go buy your stuff. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to play with any controllers. You don't need to have any pixels, cut any wire, do any pigtails. Get it set up in X-Lights. At least get your house in there, either 2D or 3D. Get some pixels on it. Start, you know, grab one of the free sequences from the X-Lights uh, Google share and start playing with it and see how it'll look. I don't like that. Let me move this over here. And then you got to figure out how you're going to get all this stuff working. Where, how, you gonna, how are you going to get the wires or the controller boxes or the extensions to all this stuff that's gonna, either going to be on your house, in the middle of the, your yard, the front of your yard, your arches. So you, you have to figure that out too. So you want to have that all in order before you start ordering stuff. Otherwise, you can waste and spend a lot of money that you don't need to. I think I have three three racks of stuff in the garage that I had bought on a clearance uh, from Big Lots and Walmart. Things that I thought, hey, I can use this. It's still sitting there because one, I haven't had time to get it set up and, and work. Eventually, I might actually get it, but working. But um, I bought pre-made uh, plastic molds and things like that that I was like, oh, I can make multiple stars for the tops of my trees for this or i can uh use these mini trees these little plastic molds and have some nice mini trees out there i got picked them up for like 50 cents a piece 90 percent off clearance everything looked good but it's still sitting on a shelf collecting dust while i focus on all these other projects uh trying to get uh you know i, I had a big matrix across my garage that took a lot of time to figure out and get together and get working. I got my regular job. I'm married. So I, you know, I'm, I'd like to spend time with my wife. We've, there's so much happens. Life happens when you're trying to do this stuff. So don't spend money. Don't waste money unless you absolutely know you're going to use it and you'll get better deals later on. If you say, okay, I need 7,000 pixels, order them all at once. You will get a better deal with doing a bulk buy than you will uh, 500 here, 500 there. Oh, I need this. I need some right now. I, let me go go to Amazon, spend a little more, get them in, in two days. Know what you need to order before you order it. So you need one controller when you when it comes time. You need one controller to start. You know, 500 to 1,000 pixels. 
the 350 watt power supply, whether it be five volt or 12 volt, depending on what you're going to go with. Uh, some three strand wire, some pigtails, uh, just and the sequence and software. So do you shop online? Do you shop local? Uh, it's definitely, like I said, a customized hobby. There's no cookie cutter store purchases. You can't walk into a store, buy a box of stuff and go set it up and have it work with your X, your your Falcon controller or your X light sequence. You can customize it to do so. I've bought a lot of things where I've torn them apart and put pixels on it, but nothing you can buy will work out of the, out of any store that you walk into. So uh, you know, you can get everything online that you need, um, but you got to watch the shipping costs. There's a lot of places. I, I, I hate paying shipping. I don't know why. I know it costs a company money to ship stuff, but when you see so many other companies offering free shipping or uh, even just a reduced shipping, I look at something, why am I paying as much for shipping as I am for, for the product that I'm buying? So it kind of gets me as a thorn in my side. So I got to do my best to find a way to either limit that shipping or or get rid of it altogether so I'll, i will i have nothing but time uh, at night i don't sleep much so i'm on browsing aliexpress browsing ebay browsing all these sites looking for the best deal even if it's only saving me ten dollars in shipping <laughs> i know that sounds like a waste of time but for me that ten dollars goes a long way for me so i uh, that that's the way that I I look for all my deals. Um, I say watch the shipping costs and get what you can locally at at your local either mom and pop's uh, hardware stores or if you need to go to Home Depot, Walmart, they do have all your bolts and and brackets and and pipe PVC pipe everything that you can need to attach these pixels to and to mount them and get them up and running for your show. I ended up buying my PEX one inch pipe from home depot the big roll that they have the 100 foot roll some people buy the straight i ended up buying the one roll because it saved money by buying 100 feet of that in a roll than it did buying i think it's that they're 20 foot pieces uh, or 15 foot pieces so i couldn't even put it in my car anyway so i bought the roll software probably the easiest thing as long as we're all using x lights it's free uh no you don't know, have to pay for anything when i started uh, 2018, looking at the software, I actually got Vixen first and started looking at that. I realized the support of X Lights was so much better. The releases were were uh, so constant, uh, fixing bugs and adding enhancements, and so much stuff was added last year. So X Lights has really been a wonderful program. That's what I'm sticking with. I know a lot of people have uh, the lower controllers and have to stick with that software for certain things or they're trying to convert or do whatever they're doing but the x lights if you're new definitely look at it as your primary source for doing these the shows um, and like i said you don't have to spend a dime uh, make your show virtual and then make it real but uh being that x lights is free and they support it and they respond to questions and, and problems so quickly. If you got money, if you got a few bucks to donate to them, donate it. It definitely goes a long way. So as far as your controllers, you've we've the nice thing about this hobby is there's more and more choices becoming available as it gets more and more popular. We've seen a big boom this year because of the X lights around the world was was published out there too. Um, Everybody with the king country, they, they shared it on their page and we got a whole influx of people that became interested in this hobby or at least wanted to come see what was going on. So we have a lot of options these days with the controllers. And like I said, I've only been doing it one year, so I only knew what I knew for the Falcon controllers. Now we got the cold ports coming out or if they've been out for a while, I didn't know about them until very recently and they're becoming uh, very popular because of their price versus the, the performance uh, and how many pixels they can actually do and, and all the features that are built into these boards. Uh, so the Falcon controllers are standalone. You're going to pay a little more because they are standalone. So you're going to pay somewhere between $125 and $250 for one of their boards. Uh, they do have the Falcon Pi cap that goes on a, on a, a, a Pi Zero or Pi uh, well, a, a, a Pi computer. 
every now and then I lose my words, but uh, you know, I think it's like $35 for that, but you have to add the pie uh, to go along with it. So it's going to add to it. Same thing with the cold boards, all the cold boards, they're not standalone. They, they require a beagle bone or I think they have some that, that you can work with the pie, but for the beagle bones, uh, it just kind of sits on top of the beagle bone and the beagle bone with the Falcon pie player software controls it. So they're a lot less expensive because they don't have all that extra control mechanisms on them. And so you're, you, the beagle bone is basically the controller. So you top it on top of a beagle bone. Well, I'm able to find beagle bones all over eBay, uh, the Rev C's or the beagle bone greens for 15 to $20, whereas brand new, they're like 40 to 50. So you find deals out there on eBay for the beagle bones, and then you add one of these cold boards on top of it for 50 to $90. And you're talking one of these cold boards, I think this is a 32 port. Each one of these ports can run 700 pixels off of each port, plus it has four uh, 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 differential receiver uh, ports that you can connect the four receivers to to add another 16 ports to. Uh, they're just very versatile and they have a lot of power behind them and people are kind of looking at them right now as well as the Falcon. I mean, the Falcons are kind of a, a staple in, in this hobby. And then you got the other controllers, the Pi Caps, the EDS Pixel, stick, uh, pixel Sticks uh, for smaller uh, uh, props that you need to have wireless or remote or, or, or work in conjunction with everything, but really don't want to run that wire all the way out there for one star or something like that. Sand devices, lower devices, Renard. Uh, there's an old list here of on the Nutcracker 123 site of comparing all these controllers. Well, Culp's not there. It's kind of behind the times, but it does have a lot of information. At least it gives you an idea of what a lot of these controller boards do for you or what can, they can do. And it would be really nice if they could update that, but I think the last update was sometime in 2017. So as far as your pixels, what do you want to do? Your spacing, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. I've seen people do six inch. It all is going to depend on your viewing distance and of course your budget. Everybody would love to have one inch space pixels and you can, you, you can show movies on them sometimes or really detailed graphics if you want one inch. You know, the norm is somewhere between two and three inches. Um, but it, like I said, it's gonna depend on your budget. Uh, uh, you you have something that's three inch spaced and you go two inch spacing. So for example here, you, you, if you buy what's called a chroma mesh from uh, from Buscoyo, it's a four by, eight, four by eight matrix and it allows up to a half inch spacing because the, the, the holes are basically diagonal like this. So you got one inch here and you got another half inch in between here. So you can basically get it down to half inch spacing on this four by eight uh, a piece of coro, coro thin coro that that has all these holes in it. So if you actually went four inch spacing, you have need only need 288 pixels. If you go down to one inch spacing, it's 4,000 pixels, 40, almost 4,500 pixels. And if you filled every hole in that uh, in that coro uh, matrix, it would be nearly 8,800 pixels. That's a big difference between 288 and 8,800. On your cost for the, for these pixels, so uh, the biggest dependency is on your viewing distance. If your house is 50 foot from the road, usually people go over, uh, uh, two inches uh, on spacing. If you're 100 feet from the road, they'll go three inch because it it your your eyes the way that the illusion is it really fills in the space with three inches, even though it's three inches apart. You're 100 feet away from it, but it's all going to depend. Uh, you you should test a few. Uh, put put some of your designs together uh, on a test matrix and, or test on on your house and stand back and see what three inches look like, see what two inches look like, maybe put them side by side, put a couple of rows so you can see what it actually looks like. And you'll get a feel for how your show is going to look with that spacing. I've kind of set myself to two inch spacing no matter what I did around uh, whether it be the, the tree that's close to the to the uh, street or the house which is probably about 90 feet back but certain areas like the garage is maybe 70 feet back so but i kind of set myself to two inch spacing around 
with all the props so I can make sure everything's consistent in my eyes, even though it probably looks a little different to other people. My wife looks at the pixels and she says she can see all three colors inside each pixel, all three channels when they're lit up. So if it's making a purple, she can see the blue and the green lit up. She doesn't see purple just with these pixels. And, and I, I don't know how she sees that, but I know people see things different ways. So the way you perceive something may not be the same way other people perceive it. So just remember that. Um, most people go with the three inch for the coverage versus the quantity of pixels that you need. So that's gonna save you some money if you go three inches. Uh, this little Merry Christmas sign that you see down here, this was two inch spacing. This is around my garage. This is at the top of the garage. So I, I took the picture probably about three quarters of the way down my driveway. And that's how it came out looking. And that's how it actually looked when you were looking at it. So it, the spacing on it was really nice. And I, uh, so I keep everything at two inch spacing because I liked how it looked that way. Uh, my, let's see, my, my house, uh, I, when I trimmed the house, I have to go back to show the original house there, but the trim around the garage and the front of the house was 916 inches total. It was about 76 feet. And I went with two inch spacing. So there's close to 500 pixels that are on the trim of my house, but they're up there permanent. I don't have to take them down. They're in permanently mounted J channel. And it, to me, it looks great to other people. Like I said, they can't tell it's up there, but it's all good definitely going to depend on the viewing distance from your house. I know some houses are right up on the street, so you may want to go a little denser, but it is going to cost you a little more. Oh, here. I'm sorry. forgot I had this pin there. <laughs> uh, my roof trim, uh, like I said, it was about 76 feet. So the, the, the top, I even did this side piece here, uh, which goes down the side of the garage and then across the top here. The I, That's not factoring in the windows, but I did put here what the left window and the right window were going to be. I didn't do this trim around the garage because I ended up doing an entire matrix around the garage. So I have, I have almost 4,500, I'm sorry, no, it will be 4,500. I have 2,300 lights around the garage here uh, rather than just the trim. Uh, so uh, at the bottom here, I have this uh, three inches would be, you know, 310 pixels for the trim, 882 for one window and 57 for another, so it's 449. If I went one inch, it would be 1,350. Balance your budget, see what works for you, what the pricing is. I could have went one inch, but I, I wanted to keep everything consistent, so I left it two inches. Uh, here's a little video of what the trim looks like while I was testing the arches. So it's more focused on the arches, but that is two inch spacing, I'm about 90 feet back. So this area is 90 feet, this is about 70 feet back on the video, and this is about seven feet from the arch. So then the arch is also two inches spaced. Uh, the lights are going into the back of it, they're not inside of it. So I hope that gives you an idea of what two inch spacing looks like just around the trim. As far as your pixels, big controversy, five volts or 12 volts. Uh, not looking to cause a, a war here, but five volt pixels are great when you have a consolidated group of pixels in a matrix, because you can do power injection very easy when it's all say in a, in a mega tree or on one of those matrix sheets. You can definitely do power injection easy and they'll probably cost you at least a third less than 12 volt pixels. Uh, some people say oh, you do the power injection and add those wires and do the soldering and the, and the, the butt crimps and all that stuff. And now you're back up to the price of the 12 volt pixels, but you still got to do some power injection with 12 volt, depending on how many you have on each, on each um, channel or uh, on each port on the controller. So either way, you're probably going to have to do some power injection, but with the five volts, when you buy the five volts outright and in bulk for the larger matrices, it will cost you a lot less than buying the 12 volt. Now the offset there is you also have to have a good supply chain on your five volt uh, power supplies. And I'll have a screen coming up on that. But the 12 volt pixels cost about 22 to 25 cents on average per pixel. And then uh, the five volts are about 18 to 20 cents, but 
there's some deals out there that you can find on the five volts that make them cost a lot less. Uh, Ray has a promo special, which is how I made my 3,200 light tree, 32 strings of 100. He's, his lights are $5 for 50. So it's, it's $10 for 100. That's 10 cents a light plus shipping. The shipping ad added, I think it ended up being, uh, I have to look back at the uh, the paperwork, but it was, it ended up costing, I think it was just $400 for the pixels shipped for 3,200 pixels. So it was a good deal. Uh, and, and I ended up making my whole tree from that. I, I originally started with the 20, 24 strand, 50 high, and ended up, was able to go to 32, to 32 by 100 because I found these pixels and really just wanted to go all out on the tree. Um, but it also, like I said, depends on your prop or your matrix. If it's a, a, a dense prop, go five volt. If there's not a problem mixing five volt and 12 volt as long as you don't plug anything in the wrong, wrong uh, plug, the wrong connector and you know blow out your pixels uh, which have been done people have shown you know the, the little white puff of smoke it happens but uh, what i do on mine is uh i use raise uh, uh connections and raise connectors for my 12 volts and i use the x connect which is smaller for the 5 volts so i never will plug in a 5 volt into a 12 volt connection it's just my way of of reasoning and when I'm in a rush, when you're in a rush, when you're out in the dark and you're trying to do stuff, fix something, you're gonna plug in something incorrectly, but if you can't plug it in, you're not gonna blow it out. Uh, but So the Ray, the Ray's promo, five old pixels, $5 shipping. Um, I did have some dead uh, blue channels. There are six pixels on the tree, as I mentioned. I, I noticed them, nobody else noticed it. So it was just in my head. Uh, but everything worked well, uh, no problems other than, I should say, they do have the JST connectors on it. And I replaced my connectors down at the bottom uh, of the tree where everything kind of plugged in with the pigtails. And I left the JSTs at the top of the tree where it all connected at the top. So with the wind blowing and, you know, the weather, the JST connectors, a couple of them would keep coming slightly undone to where they're not making full contact so I'd, I'd have issues with the tree i'd have to walk up to, to the tree shake that strand to get the to get it to kind of come back together up at the top of the tree i did have to take the tree down once to fix it but this year i'm getting rid of all my jst connectors and putting on uh pigtails with with the x connect ends on them because they're five volt uh, other ways to save on the pixels would be getting on group buys in your area order as much as you can at once uh, as I said, just do your virtual show first, figure it out, figure out how many you need. You're, you're going to need more afterwards. I always do. You, you look at something and want, want to put more pixels on that. or want to add this prop, but at least get the bulk of it up front and you'll save a good chunk of money by buying it all up front and saving on shipping. And uh, always, there's always your last minute needs. You have the option of Amazon if you need something right away. You're right at the cusp of, of getting your show up and running. And you need to finish up that prop or you had a string go bad you have something going wrong and you just got to get some extra pixels amazon or even some local vendor that can get it to you within a couple of days is definitely worth going to for that that frustration of not having to wait two two to four weeks to get your pixels power supplies of course, you need something to power the pixels. Got to have a power supply. Uh, a lot of people for quite a while were going with the mean wells or even the generic Chinese uh, th uh, 350 watt mean well style power supplies. Uh, they put out 5 volt or 12 volt, depending on which one you get. They're about 25 to $60 each. Um, they're, they're normally new. You buy them brand new online. And uh, they, they, they're sized more for the controller boxes that we use for a lot of the, the standardization, like the CG1500s, 2000s, that type of thing. Uh, and they stack easy and they're, they're nice and pretty much compact. They uh, see the size there on the screen and they weigh about a pound and a half. Uh, you have other options though, other than these standard meanwhile or generic power supplies, uh, PC power supply. As I said, I'm a computer guy for 37 years. I have PC power supplies 
everywhere. And you can actually, they're really nice to turn into bench testers on uh, to work with, to play around with stuff on your bench and, and check lights and, and controllers and things like that. But they're also very good in your controller boxes. Uh, they range anywhere from, you know, I put 300 here, but they, you know, go down to 220, depending on if you have a Dell, uh, you know, just a, a Dell pre-built computer, they usually put the smaller power supplies in there, but you got 300 up to 750, a thousand Watts. You know, they'd support pretty much the same amperage as, as the mean wells, uh, 20 amp to 60 amp output. So you can find a computer shop and ask if they have any, dead, uh, any power supplies that are, that are going out from used machines that they're getting rid of. Um, you, everybody has a friend that's in IT somewhere, uh, has a company that they work for that they're probably surplusing machines. They're getting rid of you know some e-waste, or a lot of cities now have e-waste recycle places that you can go in and ask them, you know, can I have some or can I buy a few for five bucks or something like that, and you can get them from there. Uh, power supplies, the PC power supplies, the, the, they function, they run. I ran my. I had one 350 watt power supply for my 3,200 pixels on my tree and it ran everything beautifully. No problems. It was nice and quiet. It wasn't allowed. And you just have to make a few modifications to the wiring. I didn't even know these existed until I started researching for this presentation, but the, these uh, 24 pin breakout modules, everything seems to have a breakout board or breakout module now. And this allows you to plug that 24 pin connector into here and it breaks out it gives you your power switch so you don't have to cut that cable and splice those two together the ground and i think it's the green or the purple cable you got to put together to make it a bench system that you can turn on and off without having the power button on the pc so this will turn it on and off and then it breaks it out into your 12 volts your 5 volts your 3, three you even have 3.3 volts um, so this will break it out so you can then take connect your uh, uh your boards, your Falcon or your Culp or whatever, your your uh, beagle bone to this, power it up with this, and then go from there to whatever other distro boards or whatever you have. You can connect it all to this connector here. So this makes things absolutely convenient, and they're like three to five dollars on eBay for one of these. And you add it to that power supply, and you go go from, now. Now the only thing with the PC power supplies is a little more bulkier. They're they're thicker, so they're uh, I want to say they're oh, five and a half six inches. Uh, they're more like a square instead of a flat rectangle. So it's three and a half inches uh, high instead of one point two inches high. So the size of it, and I have a picture that's coming up that will show you my PC power supply in the box for the tree, and it fits really nicely into CG fifteen hundred. I want to say it was the fifteen hundred. So, uh, but there's a little caveat note I put down here. Some extremely quiet units, like I, I have some power supplies that are like ultra quiet. They require a minimum load at all times for them to be able to, to function, to run. I don't believe this has that resistor in it to give, the, give it that minimum load if you use one of these breakout modules. But there's, there's ways you could put a resistor in there somehow to make it seem like it has a load so it will function. But that, so if you get one and you're not realizing why it's not working, well, A, it could be dead, but B, it could be one of these units that requires a minimum load to function. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the big thing that, that came out last year, the year before that people started using are these HP power supplies. These come from server units that are put, uh, you know, in the in the landfills, in the waste recycling, and these power supplies are being pulled out of them. These power supplies are made to run and run and run, nonstop, constant, 24 seven server rooms. So they're very good for what we use them for because we, most people will usually leave us connected and turned on throughout the entire show, whether it's running or not. Uh, very powerful, a uh, lot of wattage, a lot of amperage to put out and very minimal uh, to modify these to get them to function with what we have to do in our boxes. Uh, in the bottom left here, this is somebody that did this for a RC uh, charging unit, but they have these banana plugs on them and that, that he actually drilled into the, the, the bar, the bus, 
and screwed these in so that they make contact and then has this little resistor down here and then covered it in in uh something to not make it look like an hp power supply but they uh the our remote control community uses these all the time, 12 and even 24 volt. They stack two of these and make a 24 volt uh, uh, charging units. Uh, the other option is, are these break, breakout boards? These are sold uh, five, $10 out there, sometimes up to $20, but they are out there. I ended up getting last year when I started this, because I knew I had access to these HP power supplies. I found somebody that did the, the Bitcoin mining out there he was just selling off a lot of his stuff. So I got a box of probably 25 of these boards and the cables, the yellow and black cables, the six pin, these are like what you'd have on your video cards inside a computer. So the cables and the, the, the boards and a couple of power supplies, like $60. I got 25 of these boards. I, half of them are still sitting in the box. So I haven't used all of them yet. Uh, so you can find deals out there from these bit, bit miners that are, that are shutting down their, their bit mining or changing out the hardware and they sell these things. And then recently, I think it was just two weeks ago, I saw uh, we, you've got all things pixels came out with this uh, breakout board. This breakout board here on the right is actually a uh, differential receiver board. So you can plug this just like you would one of the Falcon differential receiver boards into a Falcon controller or the Colt board. So this is all everything in one. You have your breakout board for your power. You have basically like what it's an F4 distro board for your you know, additional power outputs. Uh, and then you've got your four ports here to connect lights to. So this would function with whatever the distro board is supposed to do connected to your main board, whether it be a Falcon or Colt or whatever. And then you also have additional outputs for, I think these were 30 amp circuits to go out to other controllers or other receivers or other power supplies, or I'm sorry, other powered devices. So this is everything in one for $24. That's, so you take that, put it on the uh, on your blade up here uh, on the back to, to as a breakout board, and you have everything in your box all in one for a remote uh, receiver. Uh, hook it up to whatever lights you need to, and you're good to go. Nothing else needs to be in the box. This is the power supply, get your dish, your your board, your power, uh, and your your data. Just plug this uh, Cat5 into your, your main controller. You're done. So for uh, the 460 watts, you got the different styles. You got the 460, the 750s, and the 1200s, which really in the States are only 900 watt because the the uh, on 120 volt, that's what you get out of it. The 1200 watts is out, off a 240 volt connection. So essentially these 1200 watts are 900 watts, 75 amps, pick them up for 12 to 20 bucks. They're used, like I said, but you getting you can get a bunch of them in bulk that you don't have to worry if one dies, you just swap it out, put in another one for 12 bucks. You've got basically three, meanwhile, uh, power supplies for if you buy three of them, you got three of them for the same price as one meanwhile power supply. And they can power so much more uh, at one time or more more pixels, more devices. And so it's actually saving you there as well. We're not having to put so many power supplies in a box. So it's definitely something to think about with these HP server power supplies. eBay, eBay all over the place. Look for, type in the word LOT, L-O-T, HP server power supply. And they'll come up with the different models. and you have to get the ones with these blades. There's Dell power, server power supplies and other manufacturers. They're not mod modable as easy as these HP power supplies. So keep that in mind. Controller boxes. Uh, this box to the right here is made by Jeff Tell. It's a beautiful box. There are so many controller boxes out there that just look gorgeous and they are decked to the nines. The, uh, they put a lot of money into them. The, all the glands, all the, the the pigtails, your power, your boards, the way you stack everything in them, they're gorgeous. You don't necessarily need this. It's, it, it, I, guess, you know, I guess it depends on how much you have, but as a first year, you're probably not going to need something like this. The box down here uh, in the middle is my F4 V3 Falcon controller with a two-port expansion on it. So these two Cat 5s go out to other... Uh, differential receiver boards, uh, but this F4 controls my entire tree. 
Uh, I have an F8 distro in there for the power injection. And this is the PC power supply. Closes up nice and easy. This is a, that runs my tree. Uh, the star actually one of these uh, from the uh, expansion board, one of these cat fives goes to a box below it, which runs the star and the piece stakes that are around the yard right near, near the tree. But basically this ran 3,200 pixels off of this power supply. And there's no special brackets in here, no no backboards, nothing. I just used the mounting holes that, that were in here. And if nothing, if it didn't line up right, I have the old uh, motherboard screw mounts that you used to have to use to put a motherboard into a case, an ATX case. I have a bunch of those that I have, but you can buy them as well. And screwed them directly into the plastic. And, and it they're very tight, so it's not like you you uh, they're not gonna hold. They're gonna stick, they don't go all the way through the plastic, so you're not making a hole out of the back. And then you, you so now you have another mount where, uh, mounting hole where you need it, and you put the screw in on top of that. So I'm holding this in with these two screws, holding this board in. I can't even see the screws, but they're they're there. And then this is actually just an L bracket that to to hold the top up because it, it the way I didn't strap it down. I didn't have a way to strap this down, but I held it up with the um, the fan grate on the back. And when you close it, close the box, you don't even notice it. It it doesn't fall. Everything's fine. And it functions well. And like I said, this only cost me the box, the CG fifteen hundred box, uh, and then the equipment inside. Nothing, no special mounts, no extra connectors, nothing uh, um, eccentric or, or nothing that took extra money out of my pocket because I didn't need it. Again, Jeff tells box is beautiful, and I'm sure it runs a hell of a lot of lights. I didn't need that. <laughs> uh, you may not either. And then this uh, to the left here, this is what's up in my attic. I actually wired my attic uh, on the four corners with power. So I ran uh, on the circuits that I had, the two 20 amp circuits that I had available, I ran outlets in my attic so I wouldn't have so many boxes or power places that I needed on the outside of the house. They're up in the attic and I run a few wires out where I need them. And this is actually just screwed into one of the, the beams with this bracket here. And I have a I replaced this fuse box with an F8 distro board because I got a bunch of them at a good price. And I uh, added a differential board. So the differential board is actually either to the side or just below it. So it's all right there, no box whatsoever. It's up in the attic. You know, it's protected from the elements. If not, I have leaks in my house. So I know it's protected and I didn't need a box at all for that. So it's, again, just do what you need. Go with what what you need, not what you want, and you know what you make something elaborate. You're the only one that's going to see these, uh, unless you have one of us come over to the house to check out your show. And hey, man, how'd you do that? Let me take a look. Again, I'm not going to be embarrassed if I open up this box and show it to somebody. Uh, it it functions, it works, it does what it needs to. So save some money on the boxes if you if you need to. That's one place you can trim some costs if you don't need to have all the PG7, PG9 glands and, and or uh, pass-throughs and connections. And this, I've got a lot of the props and some ways to save some money on the props throughout uh, some of this presentation here. Uh, we have obviously the, the Coro uh, dealers, the Boscoyo, the Gilbert Engineering, Holiday Coro. Uh, there's others out there as well, but those are the three big ones. Uh, you have a, a lot of pre-made options available uh, that uh, they're, they're really nice. It, it's nice to be able to get something that, that's already cut, already drilled the holes, everything's consistent, uh, but it also makes everything look cookie cutter. Your house looks the same as the other guy that has that really neat lights on it as well. Those candy canes are all the same. So, um, you know, I like to be unique somehow. I, I really haven't bought many coral props at all a lot of them i've won at the at the minis so i got the stars that are going on my on my trees this year that i won from the minis and my my wreaths that i had last year that i put up on on the house i ran i won at the uh the uh, the daytona uh christmas expo so i really haven't bought many props but i did buy the the chroma mesh 
because I have that matrix around my garage and I wanted that to be consistent even. I didn't want to have to drill 4,000 holes for that. So there's, you figure out what you need, what you want, what you need for your show, not, uh, and try not to spend money that you don't need to. Um, the designs are definitely getting more extensive. You got the rosary wreaths, you got the big spinners, the big, I think there's six, five foot, six foot spit, uh, circles that are 1100, 1200 lights. Uh, these things are big, but they're getting expensive to $70, $80 for these things. Um, you can make some of these things yourself. Uh, I prefer to try and make a matrix and make that matrix whatever I need it at that time or, or the prop that I want to make it look like, whether it be a candy cane. I'll wire, I'll design it in X lights with the custom wiring so that it, it or a custom layout so it, it's a, a candy cane rather than making candy cane to put up on the wall. So, but if I don't want it to candy cane for that song, I can make it something else for the next song. It's just the versatile versatility. Uh, you, you can look at versatility on some of these as well, instead of buying a prop that's just going to be that prop all the time. Now you can do really neat things with submodeling on some of these props and make it do different, uh, uh, make it look different. So people have the big spider web. Uh, and so they have a spider web for Halloween, but then turn it into a big spinner for Christmas. So it doesn't even look like a spider web. That's versatility. That's something that, that you buy for multiple uses. Uh, but you know, candy cane for the most part is going to be a candy cane or uh, you know, wreath can be a spinner or a, a circle or something like that, but you're stuck with that shape. So it, if you want to make some custom designs, sometimes you can just make a, a square matrix, either uh, you know, 24 by uh, 24, two by two matrix and make it whatever you want, put it on the side of the house. Um, so like I was saying, you know, the, a lot of these are cookie cutter designs. You want to be unique. You want to be original um, and be creative if you can be. But I understand that some people don't like to build stuff. They want to buy it. So you buy the props, but hopefully you like to sit and, and, and sequence your show because something you want to have, have you inside that show, not, you know, uh, you know bought store-bought props and store-bought sequences. Uh, and I say that, and again, this is where don't take offense. If it wasn't for the the sequencers, I wouldn't have had 18 uh, uh, songs in my show. I would only have two. Two show, two songs took me, you know, 130 hours to to sequence. So to get more in my show, I went to uh, the X Lights free sequences, and I bought one or two from from some of these sequencers. But uh, so this is where it's. I like to be unique and original and I had a couple of original songs in it, but I ran out of time. So I did what I could to get the show running by getting the in, integrating the free uh, sequences as well as the ones that are, that are sold out there. Uh, again, it's, it's going to be a, a personal preference, but you don't have to buy sequences if you don't mind sitting in sequencing and that's going to come up in, in a little bit. Sorry, I get sidetracked on some of these things. Uh, it's, I think about a 3D printer. Again, I know it's a cost, but it's a cost that can save you in the long, down the road by printing your own brackets, custom brackets, custom uh, connectors. Uh, even uh, you can make your own snowflakes and spinners and and print these things out. The 3D printer is, is worth looking at, but we're not going to go over that here. I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, Pea stakes. So one of the props, everybody really liked to have last year because of David Peace and the Peace family was the Peace Stakes. Um, was, if anybody has not seen his video on the Great Christmas Light Fight, or at least the one that's out on YouTube of the Peace Family show, showing showcasing these Peace Stakes, they're really cool. And they add a really good effect coverage on your lawn or on, in the area without having so many lights, but it really makes it look like you have a lot of lights. Um, I had... I, so once when that came out, people were looking at, hey, let's make those as a prop. Yeah, the coral props soon followed. You had Buscoy and the others making the props for the peace stakes. Um, Buscoy sells them for 
that the 12 inch five node stakes were $1.50 each. You want a hundred of them. I ended up putting a hundred in my yard. It's $150 plus shipping. Uh, this to the right here is what I made actually out of bread trays. So the bread that gets delivered to the stores, so there's a lot of times the trays get broken or, or cracked or something and that they get rid of the bread trays. So I got a bunch of these bread trays, ended up making a hundred of these uh, pea steaks, just like you see. And I used garden steaks to stake them down on the ground. So this is was what I came up with for free, other than my time to cut these out. I got I got 100 pea steaks uh, that I made for free, and so I saved myself you know 180 dollars on on 100 pea steaks from Boscoyo plus the shipping. Now everything of course is going to have to have lights put in it. I'm not factoring in the cost of lights. It's going to depend on how many lights you want to put on something in something what it takes, so that's not a factor other than buying those in bulk. So, but the actual, at the, the prop itself, this I made for free. But if you can't find bread trays or find something to make your own, you can uh, do it yourself with uh, uh, PVC at Home Depot. You know, for $1.63 for a 10 foot piece of PVC, you cut it into eight pieces, which will give you about three or four inches. You can make a spike, a spike at the bottom, that's a spike into the ground. You drill your five holes with the two inch spacing. You can connect the topper with a, a fitting and uh, you can make eight pixel stakes from one 10 foot piece for $1.63. Uh, if you wanted to make a hundred of them, it would cost you $21. So uh, that's, that's the savings there. And again, it's just taking your time, not your money. These are the things that if you can look at and be original, uh, they're all going to look the same in, in general. It's, it's going to have five lights on it. It's going to, if you sequence it right in X lights, it's going to look the same. But it, I didn't, I saved $150 there. Or actually, I saved $180 because mine were free. Uh, you got arches, you got fans. Um, again, the, the arches are usually made by, with PVC, with PEX, HDPE, Coro, or even strips. You know, you tie strips to, to, the PVC uh, that, that have the zip ties on them so you can put your pixels on it. Uh, there's many different ways to make arches. And now of course we have another way to make a beautiful arch that Tony Bigda came out with these fans that are down at the bottom here. Uh, he's saying that if the frames on these, the, the hardware for them cost $15. So that's a cheap way to make an arch that is very versatile because you can make it do multiple things, not just like mine are, or just an arch is you can have it do all sorts of things. So definitely always new ideas coming out by people being original, not by just buying the cookie cutter stuff that's out there. So thank you, Tony. This is really cool. Uh, definitely gonna be doing this at some time. And if you haven't seen it, check out the videos out there. They're on the XLights uh, page. If you look at the uh, Facebook XLights Facebook page, search for fans, you'll see the videos. But the Boscoyo, has uh, the arches uh, there. If you buy the large, a medium, and a small, so you have the three arches, one, the big one, the middle, and the small one, it's gonna cost you $12 plus some shipping. So the do-it-yourself way, again, PVC. PVC is definitely a good way to go. It's uh, waterproof, weatherproof, uh, uh, doesn't break easily, and it's inexpensive. So you buy two pieces of this at, at Home Depot. You get the first piece, uh, cut, uh, I think it's in, so first, I'm trying to remember how, I think I'm not sure if I put that right in here, but the first piece, you're gonna have the first piece, which is the big arch. It's gonna be about, I think nine feet long and, and you curve it and you can just, you, I have it this here. If you just want the one arch, you would use the first piece to make the curved, drill your holes, put it into two pieces of rebar in the ground. If, if that would suffice for your, weather factors and a lot of these uh, mounting options are weather permitting. As I don't have snow in Florida. I, we get some winds, we get some rain, but we don't have snow. So I don't have to raise it up higher to avoid the snow. But I, for my arches that you see in the picture here, this is the, uh, the, the PEX tubing. And I have a six or eight inch piece of rebar down to the ground, I leave about two to three inches sticking up and I put each end in and curve it around. That's all it's holding that up. 
So that that was very simple. I didn't have to make a base. I didn't have to spend more money on an extensive base and crossbar and, and brackets and and screws and all that. This is two pieces of rebar and a nine foot piece of PEX. And they looked beautiful. They worked wonderfully, had no issues. And like I said, again, my weather conditions didn't uh, require me to stake them down uh, or tighten them down or make it so that they couldn't be lifted easily. Uh, but if you want to make like the Bosco oil arches, with the large, medium, and small, you can take that second piece, cut it into a six foot and a four foot section, uh, drill 32 holes in the six foot and 20 holes in, in the four foot, and you mount the three pieces. Either use the rebar to do all three pieces, and you could probably put some sort of uh, piece of bar going up the middle to hold them all together, maybe zip tie it too, or make a crossbar at the bottom to put them, put them all on so you only have one piece that you got to put out there. And uh, actually, the other thing that, that uh, that matters is if you're using strips or you're using pixels, because normally when you use strips and arches, you're going to have to have those strips come out both ends of the the pecs or PVC. So that's going to make a difference on on your brackets at the bottom. With mine, like I said, I, I drilled in the back, so my wires are actually hanging off the back instead of coming out the the actual tubing. So that didn't make a difference to me. I didn't use the the strips. So that's arches and fans and making these props, either buying them or doing it yourself, saving a little money. Candy canes. And, and this is, you know, I've went through a lot of the different types, types of props and do the same thing, kind of giving you ideas on how to make your own. Uh, candy canes are a little, little bit more extensive because of all the holes, especially that are in like the, uh, the chroma canes that they have, but you can do it. There's, uh, or you can, you know, we drill holes and everything else. Might as well drill holes in the candy canes. Uh, but the chroma canes, the 36 to three foot talls are seven feet, seven dollars. And then you have the, the the chroma cane megas, which are seven and a half feet tall, which are forty five dollars. Uh, again, do it yourself. You PVC for just simple canes like the ones that are on the right here, the red, green, and purple that are over here. This would just be a, a simple PVC cane uh, that you can. Th th there's a video here from Mike, Mike Sisk. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He showed exactly how he made these types of canes. That uh, sorry, something popped up on my screen. So he showed how how he bent the the PVC with the heat gun, made made his uh, jig to get them all pretty much consistent, drilled the holes, and then you know put the lights in, wired them up. So with the one piece of PVC, you can uh, five foot will get you two poles from each stick. So it, 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 these are going to be five feet. You're going to take a five foot piece. You can either leave it five foot straight or you can curve the top, which is going to take down about uh, uh, a foot and a half. So to make that curve, so it'd still be about three feet tall, that 36 inches kind of matching the, the chroma cane. And uh, if you want to decorate it up, you use some red duct tape from Walmart uh, or the eBay has some uh, red packing tape that's a little less expensive. It's 110 yards for like $3, but you got to buy like six rolls to do it, to get that price. So it, if you know other people that are doing this, you can have some people buy some off you, get all together, do a little group buy of red tape. Or if you plan on doing lots of candy canes, get six rolls, it'll, it'll cover everything for you for like 18 bucks. Uh, you know, so like I said, he, he used the heat gun, bend it over the top of the PVC and make your arch on, on the candy cane, put your lights in and you're done. For the bigger, to kind of match the chroma canes, you have a sheet of four, foot, four by eight plywood. And again, it's plywood, it's not not coros, it's gonna be a little heavier, but it's gonna be 15 to $20 for a four by eight piece of plywood. And that'll get you two candy canes, two of the, uh, the size of a, a chroma cane. Uh, so you're looking at uh, $10 a piece, for if you get a piece of plywood, cut it into two. So they're ten dollars a piece rather than forty-five. So you you there's templates out there you can you can find that you can make your own template for the candy cane, mark it up, cut it out, drill your holes, and put your pixels in. And I guess I haven't asked yet is if there's any questions. I see like a, something popping up in the chat. Uh, 
I don't see any. Okay. All right. Moving on, you've got uh, spinners and reeds. Uh, Buscoyo has a chroma reeds, really nice. 24 inches for $15, 30 inches for $34. Again, plus some shipping. Uh, do it yourself. Dollar Tree has these these uh, crafting wreath rings uh, that you can use that have four rings on it. You can four, buy one of these for a dollar, get some zip ties, zip tie your pixels to it sideways, or you can try and figure out a way to make them face forward, but sideways they look good. And you have yourself a, a, a four ring wreath. If you want to add some pixel strips to it, you can make yourself a spinner with it. So it's it, yes, it's only 14 inches and it's a smaller than than an equivalent Buscoyo, but you're talking a dollar and some change to make one of these, and and they're 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 strong, they're, they they can support the pixels being mounted to it, and then you just find a way to to hook it to your your house or or attach it to a pole or something, and this is a dollar and change and and your pixels. Uh, snowflakes, angels, stars, all sorts of different things. I found this pretty creative, and these are actually pretty strong. Uh, somebody looked at something and said, "Hey, can I make? What can I make out of this?" And they looked at hangers, and these these are all made with hangers. This the star, the the wreath, and the angel are made out of hangers, hangers and zip ties. So you can get a 36 inch snowflake for three dollars out of three dollars worth of hangers. And there's videos out there. I've got some videos here that show you how to make each one. Um, some of the people that 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 do these videos have very high pitched voices and can be a little annoying, but it's definitely worth watching to see how to make these. And then again, zip tie your lights to it. And you've got, yeah, there, there's several different snowflakes that people make out there that, that video tutorials on how to make these uh, in different shapes because they're not all the same, but these are, they're, they're made out of plastic hangers. You can either get them at Dollar Tree and a lot of them say they got them at the Dollar Tree. But uh, here's some examples of clearance deals that I saw at Walmart. A couple of this is 18 for 50 cents, and these are you know, strong, sturdy plastic. Uh, that uh, these are this was a 12, a 10 pack for a dollar. So I had actually ended up buying a bunch of these red ones to make these. But then later on, I found these for 50 cents. <laughs> so uh, I may make more. I'm not sure, but sometimes they get a little go a little crazy on on the clearance deals. But yeah, for for two three dollars, you can make these out of hangers and attach lights to them. Uh, mini trees. There's so many ways to make a mini tree. I've seen people take there's somebody out there took a one of those riser seats for the garage, flip it upside down, attach the the strips to it, and make a put a pole in the middle, attach the strips to it, and it kind of looked like the bottom trees here. There's, an ingenious way it's a little more sturdy because it had a, a strong base to it but a classic way that people would make mini trees or or taller trees would be with the tomato cages if you look for the tomato cages after season after planting season and stuff these go on clearance i've uh, these are the nicer thicker uh steel tomato cages that are colored and powder coated. So you can add a little color to your, your display during the day. Everybody's, you know, going for the, the decor stuff, but even just the standard silver uh, steel ones. Hey, Lowe's had a clearance deal. It was unbelievable. It was like 36 cents a piece. I think I got 50 of them because you're going to take two or three of them and stack them on top of each other to make all those, uh, uh, first make it sturdy second uh, have more uh, places to attach their, your lights to but people attach them either in vertical rows in spirals both so you can do different different uh, uh, effects on these trees and these range from 46 or 42 to 52 inches tall so you they zip tied at the top together and you at the like i said i've, I've, I've just won some stars at the at the florida mini which i'm going to put on top of five of these this year that I, did, I this is one of the things I didn't get to make last year because I ran out of time, but I have well over 50 tomato cages to make my, my smaller trees. I really focus on the mega tree this year, this, last year. So that's what took most of my time. Now that I have that down, I'm going to focus on more of these little props, but tomato cages and zip ties. It's all it really takes to make these trees. Uh, versus buying these the the Dalek trees from Boscoyo. 
again, don't hopefully if anybody's listening from bus going out, this is not a dig at them. This is just other ways to do this and save some money. It's all it is. Uh, not saying to not buy from Busquay. If you find something you like, buy it. Uh, props, uh, custom designs. So yeah, here, custom designs. So, Coroplast, you can buy Coroplast sheets from Home Depot. They are thinner. They're not as thick as the stuff that you get from, from uh, Buscoy or, or Gilbert. But some people actually take two of these sheets, put them together for $40. You have a four by eight sheet that you can cut any design you want out of. The caveat is you need good tools to cut Coroplast properly without it shredding all over the place. So that's that's an issue there of cutting the holes. But people have done it. People show that they do it uh, with the right tools, with the right drill bits. So that is an option. You can make your own Coroplast, Coro props with Coro that you can get locally at Home Depot. Uh, you can make, even if you just use it to cut letters out, make make the letters, uh, you know, stay home, all this stuff right now with the Corona stuff, you know, that, that people are buying these these props for letters saying stay home or stay safe or whatever you can do that right with this with this coro stuff and like i said earlier at the matrix make a small 12 by 12 or 24 by 24 inch matrix two by two matrix either one inch or two inch space and make it whatever design you want for that particular song the sequence or the holiday uh, that way you're not buying the uh the spider web for a uh, small spider web or spider for Halloween and then having to have the Santa face for Christmas. You can kind of make it what you want when you want. Uh, it costs a little, little bit more upfront to make one of these, but like I said, it's versatile. You can use it in as whatever you want and at whatever time you want. You just have to program it in X lights. Um, hardware, hardware being mounting hardware or ways to mount stuff to the house. Uh, Okay, uh, weather dependent, you have your uh, your clips, your L brackets, that type of stuff you want to get either at Home Depot. If, you, if there's something specific that you can't find at the local shop, look online. It's out there. And more than likely, you can get it on eBay for pennies from China. Um, the, the clips, I have about 5,000 uh, shingle clips that I get. I've got the last two clearances from Home Depot. Uh, boxes of the clips that they sell for nine, ten bucks. I get them for for fifty cents for these boxes of, of fifty to hundred clips a piece. So, if I, I'm, I'm using them to mount some stuff to the roof, but I I have limited roof space because I have a solar system, so I got to watch what I do on the roof. But I have tons of clips for pennies on the dollar because of the clearance deals. Uh, sandbags. This is a a YouTube video on making sandbags. Now, some people say they can't find the the uh, item in the dollar stores or the dollar generals. It's like a, a a letter bag that's made of a material that's really nice, that's waterproof. Uh, it's like a messenger bag, I guess it is. But some people say they have trouble finding it. But if you can find it for three dollars, you, you you get the messenger bag. You sew it. You sew a piece of uh, a handle on it, and it shows you what what to use for the handle. You throw, uh, throw some sand in, in a couple of uh, Ziploc bags and one on each side, and you can hold down your props on your roof. Um, these would make good 50 pound sandbags for $3. I don't know why sandbags are so expensive, regular sandbags. Even these burlap sandbags are usually really expensive. But Walmart, I found, has 10 for $31. So $3.10 a piece for these, the burlap sack that I have shown here. So again, you can sew the end. You can put your sand in it. You can make it kind of similar to the way that this guy made this handbag with the courier bag. Make a 50, 30 to 50 pound sandbag to hold your props up on your roof so you don't have to drill into the roof. Uh, so cheap sandbags. Uh, zip ties. I know Jeff on his uh, existentials that he did. Lots and lots of zip ties. Buy them in bulk. Buy them however you can. If you have a Harbor Freight around you, they have these coupons, and this is a current coupon. Uh, there's a the Harbor Freight database. I have a link here or at the website for the coupons. You just search for ties, and you'll come up with coupons like this. So you can actually take a snapshot of this on your phone. Go to the database on your phone, Safari or whatever. 
get to this uh, uh, search for ties, open up this pic image, take a snapshot and show it to the person at Harbor Freight and they'll scan it and you'll get your zip ties for a buck. So there's 108 inch cable ties, zip ties for a buck. If you need smaller ones, or if you're doing a lot of lights on say the hangers or whatever, you don't want to waste these these long eight inch and have to cut six inches off. Uh, eBay has a thousand of the four inch zip ties for eight bucks. So zip ties, lots of zip ties, you're going to need them. Uh, and I left my little <laughs> extra text space down here. Sorry about that. Moving on. Pigtails. Uh, that is a big thing. Uh, people trying to use, people use pigtails on all their lights. They usually pick a standard and go with that for pretty much all their lights that they get from whatever vendor they buy them from. Uh, here's uh, some people have seen this picture. I When I first found this picture, I was like, oh, that's the difference. I didn't know really what the difference was. These are all three core, they're just different sizes. Uh, this is 18 and a half millimeter for the, for the Paul's Zhang style. Ray has a 13 and a half millimeter. X Connect I think is, is nine and a half millimeter. Then you have, I'm not, I don't think I ever saw a, a DIY LED Express connector, so I didn't put one here. The JST connector, that's this one here that comes on a lot of the standard lights just that you don't buy from specific vendors. Uh, these, this is what they come with uh, on Amazon. If if you don't buy, if you buy them from certain vendors out there, and then you also have an option of the Delphi the automotive connectors. Uh, they're not Delphi anymore; they're called Aptive, but everybody knows them. Delphi. They're very waterproof. You know, they're they're heat. heat they can withstand a lot of heat, a lot of cold. They're used in automotive uh, connections, headlights, and and wiring throughout your car. So if you got the time and the patience to wire these up, this is a four prong, but they come in one, two, three, four, up to six, I think. Uh, so you can have six wires running in at one time and you connect it together. I actually use these on my eaves. I'm sorry, on my on my trim of the house because I wanted something that was going to be out there permanently and last a long time. So I, I, I'm assuming that these would, the, the normal pigtails would work. But again, I was new at the time. And I thought these look pretty good and I know how durable and reliable they are in vehicles. So they gotta be just as durable sitting up on my roof or uh, under the eave, uh, weathering the storms out there. And they've done well for a year, a year and a couple months now it's been out there. So there's your options of your pig channels. You, you, you wanna choose a standard. I've chose two, one for my five volt and one for my 12 volt. I use the X, the smaller X connect for the five volt, smaller five volt, bigger 12 volt, kind of makes it easy to remember as well. And I use the Ray Rules for every, all my 12 volts. And then you wanna find the best price in bulk. Uh, they come in different sizes, 20 centimeter long, 50 centimeter, 30 centimeter, you know, however long of a pigtail that you want on, on the proper or wire that you're making. They do come in different sizes. You don't always need a long one, especially if you're making your own custom cables uh, or the prop's gonna be right where a plug is or near a plug, or you're gonna run an extension cable to, to that prop. You don't need the longer ones. So if you can go with the shorter ones, they'll be a little less expensive. Uh, this is a, a link for AliExpress. I've ordered three or four batches of, of pigtails from him. Uh, and I believe this is from Paul. It's the ETOP LED uh, store. I think it's Paul Zhang, but I've had no problems receiving them and they're free shipping. It's 12, how much is it? Let's see if I can find it here. No, that's not it. I'm trying to bring it up on the screen here. I thought I had it. I didn't think that's it. Nope, not it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. So let's see if nope. Nope, there it is. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see this. So this is the ETOP LEDs store. This is uh for so I want the 13 and a half millimeter ray style, which is why I put the sizes there because I was confused for a long time on the sizes. And um, 20 centimeters long. So for 10 pairs, so you're getting 20, 10 female, 10 male for 12.89, free shipping. Now I add two, still free shipping. Add the third, oh, all of a sudden it adds shipping. So you gotta watch that. On some of these, I found 
you can order two. And actually, if you go back to two or one, it's going to add shipping. So you got to clear your cache and go back to it or clear the page and go back to it. It'll be free shipping. You add two. You maximum you can do is two with free shipping. And I just I save uh, you know, eight, nine dollars in shipping. And I have th those 20 pairs shipped to me. If I need more, I'll just do a second order. It hasn't been a problem. There's a couple of things that I found on AliExpress that do that. It says free shipping, but once you add two or three to your, you, know, to, you want to add two or three quantity, it will start adding shipping. So order the minimum quantity you can without, with free shipping, save some money. So just want to show you that. Uh, All right. Okay, so yeah, pigtails. I did. Ha I was about to put something in here for extension cables uh, because I did have a link for the extension cables. Uh, let me go back. So let me bring that one up real quick. All right. So this is Ray's store, but it's something that he doesn't really post directly. It's hard to find these. This is actually found. One night, I'm just searching for extension cables. This actually says two meter, but they're three meter. They're nine, nine, almost 10 feet long. I think they are 10 feet long. I measured them. So they're three meters long, even though it says two. But in down here, I think in the specifications, it says uh, three core, three meter. So they're actually three meter. $10 a lot with shipping. I buy 50 at a time. Shipping it makes it ends up being $1.52 for a 10 foot flat three core, 18 gauge. If it's 18 gauge, I you know I haven't measured the strands, but it says it's 18 gauge, uh, but it has the Raywoo connectors on it. It's a 10 foot, uh, 10 foot extension cable for $1.50. You can't find that anywhere. Any store that you go to, Wired Watts and all the others, they're minimum three to four dollars for an extension cable of 10 feet long. So again, this is what I looking at night. I stumble across things like that. I don't have a problem ordering directly from AliExpress. If I don't get it, I just turn around and reverse the charge on my credit card if, if it was a bogus dealer. But this is directly from Ray. You, you want, and now, okay, let me go back to there. This is $10 a lot, 10 pieces. So you get 10, 10 foot cords, three meter cords. It says shipping is 1732. If I add five, now you took in $10. So it's $50 plus 45 shipping. I'm paying as much for shipping. Ray, you can still email him this this model number, say, I need a quote for 50 or 100, however many you want of this model number, what's the quote for shipping? And he will send you back a much better rate than the $45. So uh, I ordered 100. So it was $100 and it was it was $52 shipping, but that's what made it you know, $152. So 100 of them is $1.52 a piece. Uh, definitely a deal. And they work well. And that was my headache last year was making these cables, extension cables. I had a lot of glitches on my props because of those extension cables. They, they just weren't butt soldered right or, you know, with the, the solderless con connectors, the solder wasn't melting all the way. So I was having problems. So I replaced a lot of them throughout the season after I ordered my first batch. I also use these. Uh, for custom taking something and making it a custom prop like uh, the RBLs. I bought a bunch of RBLs on clearance from Home Depot. And what I did was I cut these in half. Uh, so I have my input and output for, uh, they were four, four and a half feet long. So I can stretch these out as I wanted to and connect it to two, the PC boards that I had bought, the six LED PC boards. Uh, that went in the really big lights. I also did the same thing for my my landscape lighting. I put in the three uh, LED PC boards along with these cables. So I'd have a nice distance between each of my landscape lights. So I converted landscape lights. I have a picture of it later that I bought on clearance at Walmart after, after season before all the holiday stuff went out and converted them all into RGB lighting. So now I have those throughout the year and I will be using them in the show this year. Okay, so soldering. So here's those uh, solderless solder seal connections. They really are nice and convenient. Uh, they normally do work. 
you you definitely have to have that right heat gun. You can do it with the lighter. You get some uneven heat. You can do it with the larger heat gun. You definitely start melting the wires. You have to have that right mini heat gun. And I know uh, Tom Stallings had it when I went over to his house and, and did a few of these. So it was really nice with his device. But whenever I wanted to do it at home, I was having issues. I got one of those uh, uh, lighters that had the the debutane uh, uh, like weatherproof, so the windproof lighters, and those seem to work for a bit. But I also had to watch how close it was because it definitely puts out a good, good flame, a good heat. So I never spent the money to buy one of these nice heat guns like Tom had. But I, I may do that this year, or I'm, I really I'm just kind of sticking with soldering, doing regular soldering of all my connections ahead of time. If I have to do something quick, I will use these uh, or the the crimp connectors. But these these are very nice. They they do. Uh, they are waterproof, uh, as waterproof as you can get. Um, they they average about ten cents when you buy them in bulk on eBay or uh, uh, Amazon. I've gotten deals on both. Uh, you have to watch with some of the deals that that are especially on eBay. They'll have say a hundred pieces, and you'll get ten blue, uh, twenty red and 20 of the white so that's 50 and then you get 50 pieces of heat shrink so it's 100 pieces they're not lying it's 100 pieces but you're only getting 50 of these these but these uh solderless connectors or solder seal connectors i never know what to call these things there's so many different names but yeah watch watch that on ebay if you go to look for these it looks like a great deal but you're really only getting like 50 of them and also you don't really use a lot of the blue and the yellow which are the larger uh well, smaller number of gauge, but larger wire connectors, unless you're you're but connecting a bunch of connector cables in, in one, like doing a, a power injection. So I have tons of the blue and yellow, but I don't have much of the red. So I've had to order just red over and over when, when I was doing this last year. Uh, but uh, it also it takes six of these to replace an LED or, or one pixel in a string. You're going to have your three, your positive, negative, and, and data. So it's going to take six of these, so that's 60 cents for the repair or repairing that light. And you got to hope you have the right light, otherwise you just wasted six buck, buck connectors. But they're very easy to use. A lot of people use them. Um, but the other downfall is if it's a very short cable lead. I, what I do is I actually trim off a lot of this extra white here, because a lot of times it's way too long to fit on some of the connectors for the pixels, especially if they're like three inch spaced. So I do trim this down a little bit, but still it makes it hard, especially outside in the dark, you got a flashlight on your head, you're trying to do everything with the with the lighter and hold these together while you, while you shrink them. It, it can be um, frustrating. So, but they are good, I guess, in quick repairs. And again, I, I tried to do everything hand soldered. Oh my gosh, it's 9.30, I apologize. This is really going long. <laughs> um, well, I guess I didn't prove some of this either. Okay. Moving on. The uh, crimping and tools. You got special crimp tools for a lot of the fer ferrules, the bullets, the spades. Uh, they do require these specialized tools, but they are very good at, at making your connections, uh, making it easy to put some of these connectors into the, the green jacks that go in, in the controllers. Uh, for each port, um, they they stay in better than just screwing down the wire. So these are an option, and you can find these uh, on Amazon or eBay for fairly inexpensive. This is the kit that I bought. I think it was seventeen dollars for this whole kit with the crimper. Not the best crimper, but it it works. Uh, you want a more professional, you're going to spend forty fifty dollars just on the tool itself. This was a tool, the yellow one up top here. This was for doing those um, Delphi connectors. You needed something like this to crimp the, end, the the metal pieces. So specialized tools for some of this stuff, but if you like crimped connections uh, to, to hold things together, you can go that route and there are ways you can find deals on them. Uh, so uh, tools in general, uh, not having the right tools obviously will make the job harder that you're trying to do. If you don't have the right screwdriver, you know, the mini screwdrivers, when you're trying to screw in those the, the screws on the controller, you have to have one of those small screwdrivers. Um, I had bought a drill press. I bought an angle grinder 
uh, to cut the rebar. I bought a whole bunch of tools. I basically doubled or tripled the amount of tools I had in my garage. That's an expense in this hobby. So, you know, good wire strippers, cutters, angle grinder, uh, drill bits. Drill bits are, you, you really only use one or two sizes of drill bits for the most part, but they wear down, especially going into the metal or, or, or PVC. You just keep drilling and drilling, it's going to wear down. Um, I have a, a like a local tool shed. A lot of stuff comes from China. They basically buy it direct and and it's like one of those walk around tool sheds. They they have stuff for next to nothing. Uh, flea markets, flea markets always have tools. If you want, you're looking for specific sockets or or um, uh, just power tools. And um, again, if you have a Harbor Freight in your area, uh, I'm sure people have equivalent to Harbor Freight stores in the, it, around them. So you don't always have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's. But Harbor Freight is a good place to buy. They just had the angle grinders for $5. I think it's $10 now, but they have these specials that go on all the time. And not the highest quality of tool, but it will, it will work well and do what you need to do. And if it only lasts one season, you spend $5. You didn't spend $80 on a professional DeWalt or something like that that is may die on you in two years or three years. But it's I'm one of those that will buy a a hundred of those, or just sorry, twenty-five of the the connectors for an, your phone to charge from the Dollar Tree, rather than spending twenty-five dollars on one cable. Because for me, they last just as long, whether it be three months, six months, a year. They're gonna they're gonna break. They're gonna rip. They're gonna die. I'd rather spend a dollar and lose a dollar when it breaks, and get my function out of it than spend twenty-five and feel like I just got robbed. So, I'll buy some of the cheaper tools. They work. They eventually die you replace them again. Um, and overall, it saves me money because I sometimes I may only use the tool once or twice, but I needed it and I didn't have to go borrow it for somebody or find it from somebody. Uh, but it's a, you know, definitely, like I said, it's an expense buying these tools. So you got to include that in your budget. Uh, you know, show them as household purchases if you have to kind of pack yourself up to to buy those versus spending the money and saying, oh, it's, it's for my show, it's for the pixels. Sequencing, this is uh, self-explanatory. You can sequence your own songs. It's definitely a lot of time involved. Uh, some people do 60, 80, 100 hours for a song, um, especially when you're new and you're learning the program. Uh, as you get better with it, you can reduce that time, but it's still gonna take at least 40 hours to do a good three minute song. So. But, it, but it's unique, it's your design, it's your cre creativity in that song. But a lot of people don't like to sit for 60 hours or not straight, but overall, I think I worked on my first song over a three week period and ended up being like 60 hours. Some people don't like to do that. I'm a programmer, I can sit and program HTML or uh, websites and, and code and stuff. So I'm used to doing it, sitting and playing. So a lot of you sit and play games for four or five hours at a time. It's kind of like the same thing, but you're being creative on your own. Uh, and I think that self-creativity in your show really needs to stand out sometimes instead of just being a cookie cutter show. Uh, but there are the free sequences and a lot of people make some great sequences and share them. You got that X-Lite Google Drive, you got Sequence Armory, Armory which is trying to, um, to show them all on the same level uh, of these sequences to show you what it looks like on this prop instead of what that person had made it originally on. So the sequence summary was really a nice idea. And and I go there a lot. The, then of course you have the sequence vendors. There's a list of, of six of them there in alphabetical order. So I'm not saying no specific order, it's alphabetical order. Uh, so nobody took precedence over anywhere else. There's the, the links to them. These guys make some great sequences. They're, they're the, what they can do with X lights is phenomenal and definitely worth the cost because they took their time to do it. Uh, but again, this, I know I pissed off some people early on and said, why doesn't everybody make their own sequences? I know why now, but it, if you can make your sequences and you have time, make a few of them because it really is worth your while. Other ways to find some deals. Here's some pictures. Here's that the landscape lighting that I found. These are this is a four pack of these landscape better homes and garden lights. They're $35. I ended up getting them on clearance for six bucks. So $1.50 a piece. 
cost me a dollar fifty for the PC board and well, sorry, it was cost me two fifty for the PC board and the the uh, ten foot extension cable that I used to solder onto the PC board. And I have them out front, and I have a picture somewhere. I uh, I've been trying to get a good picture of the landscape lighting. I just haven't had my good camera to do it, so everything's coming up blurry on my phone. Here's the RBLs at Home Depot on clearance. Uh, these were eight bucks a piece. I got them for four. Actually, I got them for less than that because they were actually 75% off when I got them that day. So I got them for two, $2 for the, and I only picked out the whites. I didn't want the colors. So I, got, I ended up getting 17 white uh, RBLs and I'm converting them for this year. So definitely uh, browse uh, the after clearance at the major stores, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Ollie's, Menards, whatever you have in your area. They, everybody has the clearances after Christmas. Don't waste your money if it's something you know you're not going to use, even though it looks, oh, wow, that's cool. Like I said, I have a lot of stuff in my garage from 2018 clearance into 2019 that is still sitting there. I want to use it. I don't know if I'm going to have time to, to use it or actually put it into the show, but it's there. But I wasted money on it. It's sitting there. Um, the do it do it yourself Christmas and uh, us Christmas lights forums. They have the buy sell trade on there. We've got the X lights uh, Facebook trading uh, page. People put stuff up there. You can find some deals if you jump in. I've seen a few uh, Falcon boards and receivers and things like that up there recently at decent prices. Uh, definitely save you a little money over over buying it direct from from PixelController.com. So they're definitely worth looking at. You got people that went into the hobby and decided to back out of the hobby because it's just too much, too much time, too much hassle, too much headache, too much, too much frustration. So they just dropped their load of everything that they had bought for pennies on the dollar sometimes. I know Tom, <laughs> Tom has taken advantage of that. Uh, so it, it's good to look at those. I said, find any recycle in your area for power supplies, wire. When they the people bring in rolls of wire that are good, they just their rolls of wire, you know, shorter pieces that they can't use in a house or something, or they're good pieces of, of wire, and you can get them at these recyclers. Even enclosures, I saw somebody used recycled uh, power boxes. So a power box that's out, uh, on the side of your house, your main, they've turned those into controller boxes. They got them for free. So look at things like that. They are they sit outside all day long. They're weatherproof for the most part, as long as it doesn't have too many holes in it. You know, it's it's good to go. So why not try and use it if you can get it for free? Uh, search YouTube for do-it-yourself Christmas crafts, like those hanger, uh, hanger designs, hanger props. There's a lot of really neat stuff out there uh, that people make. A lot of it comes from the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, places like that where you're not going to spend a fortune on these things. Uh, here's something that a lot of people don't think about, but credit cards with cash back and bonuses. If you shop at Amazon a lot you and you have the Amazon credit card, you're getting 5% back on every, every purchase. I have probably 16 credit cards, Discover, Amex, everything. I only use them for the cash back bonuses for the month. So I get 5% back on gas for these three months and I get 5% back in Amazon for these three months. Uh, I also get them at the beginning for the bonuses. Well, uh, we just got two Norwegian MasterCards. We went on our cruise. You get the extra bonus points for doing anything on Norwegian. Plus if you spend a thousand dollars on the card or put a thousand dollars on the card, you get $300 back. So getting, you know, 30% back uh, in points that you turn around and put back on your card as cash. So you're, you're actually only paying $700 for $1,000 worth of stuff. If you know you're making a big purchase and you can get a credit card like that, and you're not going to use it and abuse it uh, and, and have all your stuff charged on there and paying interest on it, there's, that's, there's no point for that. But you can get some good cash back bonuses on a lot of these cards. Discover doubles everything at the end of the first year that you've, you've uh, got back in bonuses that year. There's a lot of neat ways uh, to save with credit cards. People think credit cards are the devil. If you know how to manage your money and, and use them right, they will make you money. You, you won't be giving a, a credit card company any any money. And a lot of these that have these cash back bonuses have no annual fees, so you don't have to worry about that either. But definitely don't carry a balance. Pay it off at the end of the month. Know what you're spending. If you're going to spend it anyway, 
try and do it on a card that you can get 5% back on or even 1.5% back. It does add up a little bit. It adds up. I get easily $1,000 back a year from all the credit card stuff that I do that that uh, I save. So I save $1,000 by getting it back in my pocket. And here's a little example of building a show for $1,000. You can... Yeah, you know, this is really the minimum that you're going to spend on on getting at least a basic show going, whether it be the outline of your house or you want to put these 2,000 lights to a, a, a smaller mega tree. You can do that, but this is uh, an example of and some costing and pricing here of of how to build a show for a thousand. You got your controllers, and like I said, the culps and needing the beagle bones, the culp boards are definitely a lot less expensive than the falcons right now because you have to buy the beagle bone, but you can find the beagle bones on a deal. You got the 32 gigs SD card. And so you're looking at $51 for the uh, Culp board. Beagle bone, I put that retail, what you really find it for most of the time, brand new for 40, but I picked mine up for $17 plus a few dollars shipping. So 20 bucks for my beagle bones. And a 32 gig SD card nowadays is five, six bucks. I mean, nothing to load the FPP on. So that's $100. Um, this Culp F8 can support 50 to 600 pixels, 700 pixels per port on the eight ports that are on it, plus four additional differential expansion boards for another 8,400 pixels, plus a 16 port header. So you can use one of the F16 expansion ports or something on this board. This is an amazing board for $51 to start with. Obviously you have to buy the differential receiver boards and the 16 port header to continue to expand, but it is expandable. And and it's very robust, so it's definitely a good little board to start with. Uh, the lights, 2,000, 12 volt, uh, you know, 220, 230 for a thousand. So I put 450 here for those 2,000. Excuse me. You can find deals on on that. Maybe get it down to 400. But let's just kind of go with reasonable prices here. Uh, the power supply. I get pick up two of the 12 volt 750 watt HP uh, power supplies with the breakout boards. You can find two of the, the HP power supplies for 24 bucks. The breakout boards are like 12 bucks a piece, so that's another 24 bucks. So say 50, but 50 dollars. Excuse me, one second. <laughs> Drink here. I've been talking for an hour and 45 minutes. Okay, you got your controller box, your mounting brackets, things to mount all the stuff in, about $50. It costs about $15 to $20 for the CG, $1,500, $2,000, and some mounting brackets to mount your, your power supplies and your, your controller. Uh, Three-core wire to, for your extensions, pigtails, and some extension cables. I just put a number there of $75. I was just trying to figure out for a basic show to hook up these pixels if you're going to do a, a bunch of props around rather than like one solid tree or something <laughs> that uh i figured out a few things here and there with the, uh, some pigtails and wire and extension cables about 75 dollars your props are going to be the unknown what are you going to build with this stuff so if you look at the bottom here you're you're if you do your own sequencing it's going to cost you nothing if you buy a sequence, it's going to you know, be two hundred dollars, somewhere in between, or free for the uh, the free sequences. So let's just say you took one of the free sequences to mess around with. It's nothing for the sequencing at this time. The seven hundred twenty-five dollars here, so it leaves you with uh, two hundred seventy-five dollars for props. So you buy a bunch of candy canes and and uh, uh, other uh, props from Bascoyo, or you make your own with that two hundred seventy-five dollars. And you put everything together, and you can have a nice show. Plus, sometimes is more for a thousand dollars. So hopefully that that you know gives you an idea, especially some of the new people, what it actually costs. And well, in conclusion, <laughs> uh, remember this is a hobby. Of course, unless you're Tom Bet George, and he's made a professional career out of this, and so have a few other people doing these these lighting. Uh, shows but it's a hobby have fun with it the pixels can be expensive but you can do more with less you don't have to have fifty thousand lights in your show 
uh, you with what you can do with X lights, it makes it look like there's so much more. Everybody was surprised that I had 10,000. I was surprised I ended up with 10,000 lights in my show. That was a lot for a first year, but everybody was surprised. They were thinking there was like 25, 30,000 lights in my show because of the way that, that the sequences display them. It makes it look like there's a lot more. So you don't necessarily need a lot. Um, don't mortgage your house to put it on an elaborate display. This is for fun. This is a hobby. Don't go broke. Uh, if you use the credit cards, like I suggested, don't carry a balance. It's for pixels. If you got to do an emergency car repair, that's something else. But uh, don't carry it for pixels. You're you're spending more now on your pixel show or on, on your your cost for your show by paying interest. Spend what you can afford. It's obviously self-explanatory. Uh, enjoy. Facebook and the social community that we have get get with your local groups, share ideas, you know things like those the new fans from from Tony. Those are that's a wonderful idea. People are going to probably run with that. The new thing I think this year is like three D uh, designs, whether it be spheres or cubes, or that's going to be you know really interesting to see this year how people do that. But most of all, have fun. This is you're going to get enough frustration out of out of connecting all this stuff you really got to try and figure out how you can have fun with this and that's it okay well thank you angela i appreciate it 